Hey there YouTube, uh, Trevor here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the next part of the PMDG tutorials, which it's more of a just a general tutorial, I guess, but um, a tutorial nonetheless. It's going to be on flight planning. So um, I realized in my other tutorials that I didn't add anything on flight planning. I kind of just made it and assumed that you guys probably knew how to make flight plans, but um, I thought I'd indulge myself and anybody else that, who needs it on how to make a simple uh, flight sim flight plan. I'm not going to do a legit like, you know, uh, fill out a whole card for a realistic flight plan. It's going to be a watered down basic IFR flight plan uh, uh, for flight sim. So like I said, I'm just covering the basics here just to get you guys up in the air. So first what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get uh, um, uh, your web browser open up. So I'll move that over here. Okay, there we go. And okay, once that's up, we're gonna go ahead and go to Sky Vector. So skyvector.com is what I use to do my flight planning. All right, and we are gonna be taking off from uh, Daytona Beach. So go ahead and click the flight plan button up on the top left corner. Type in KDAB or wherever you're coming from. Um, okay, so a flight plan is split up into three basic components. You got your departure, your in route, and your arrival. Uh, and then you have your arrival that's split up into your arrival and approach. So right now we need to focus on our departure. We need to get out of Daytona en route to Fort Lauderdale. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to control and left click on Daytona so it opens up a new tab for me. This will make it a little bit easier to navigate. Um, I'm going to scroll down to the departures page or to where it has the departures. So we got the DPs, the departure procedures. And now I'm going to look on look for a departure that's going to uh, depart me to the south. I need to be going south towards uh, Fort Lauderdale. So uh, you pretty much just want to look. I believe uh, when I was looking at on the Lama, yeah, Lama Five is the one that I'm going to use. So and you can look at the chart. It's pretty easy to read, but for the most part, what you're going to do is you're going to just be putting it right into the FMC, and the FMC will take care of it. But let's go ahead and look at it. Um, for my scenario, I'm just having it on fair weather, um, so there won't be any wind. So I'm just going to take off from like 3 4. So I'll look down here, and, or whatever runway you're taking off of, look at the description. It says take off from like 3 4, climb heading 3 4 2. All right, to 5000, or as assigned by ATC. Expect vectors to intercept uh, Ormond Beach VOR uh, on the radial 176 to Bitho International. Then uh, via sign route, expect clearance to field, blah, 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 blah. Pretty much what the saying is we're going to take off, fly heading 342, and then in a real life scenario, we would have ATC tell us that we're going to go to uh, turn to whatever heading to get to Ormond Beach VOR. And then we would tune into Ormond Beach VOR and track the radial 176 going down. Well, that's one we might we're probably not gonna have ATC unless you happen to have someone on at that time. Um, but what we are gonna do is we're probably just gonna take off uh, and we'll put in the heading and then we'll put in Ormond Beach, go direct to Ormond Beach, turn um, and pretty much just be on our way direct to Bitho. Um, the radial 176 tracking it. If you know how to do it, then you know you know what to do there. But otherwise, just go direct to Bitho. So we're gonna hit Bitho. Okay. With that, we're going to go ahead and go back to our other page, and we're going to put Bitho as our first uh, intersection. So now if we look at the little magenta line, we know that we're coming out of Daytona, hitting that Ormond Beach Beach VOR, which is actually going to be that one. So we can actually put that in there as well if we want to. So bring that up. There we go. So that's what it's looking like so far. Come out, hit Ormond then come down to Bitho. Alright, well now I'm going to Fort Lauderdale. Well, to make it a little bit easier to judge how I'm going to get there, I'm just going to go ahead and put that in there right now. Fort Lauderdale. I got a general route going direct from Bitho to Fort Lauderdale. Um, now, for personal experience of flying in Florida and also just general knowledge, it's always easiest to follow the coast if you can. So I'm going to go ahead and go from Bitho down to Treasure. So I'm going to take Bitho direct to Treasure. Now you might be looking at it and go, why don't you take the J45? Well, the J45, I can only take that if I went from Oviedo. 
or or something that connected on the J45. I can't just directly just jump on the J45 because the J45 is a jetway. It's invisible. You can't see it. Um, it's it's not there. There's no fix to it. So it's not like you can just plug it into the FMC and go, okay, let's just jump on the J45. It's not like highway. You have to have a fix from one point to the other to jump on that, um, which we aren't on any uh, jetway. Well, we are on one, but that's nothing relative to our route of flight. So we're going to go direct to uh, Treasure. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. PRV. And if you want to, you can make note of these uh, frequencies. The FMC will take care of tracking to them, but if you want a little bit more experience with them, go ahead and put the frequency in there, and then you can track it uh, via the VOR setting in there. I, I might show you that when we do the in-flight video. Um, with that... I'm going to follow, this time I'm going to use a J45 air route, and I know I'm going to use Bluffy as my next one because I already looked at the arrivals for Fort Lauderdale, and I'll show you those now. But the best way to go would be go to Bluffy and then end, so I'll show you that. So we're going to go ahead and control, click onto Fort Lauderdale, so I get a new tab. And then I'm going to go ahead and look at the arrivals, the... Uh, um, the stars, standard terminal arrival charts. And the first one on there is Bluffy 2 arrival. I'm gonna go ahead and check it out. Um, and as you can see, we got treasure here uh, on the R150 radio uh, past Topper to Bluffy. And so as you can see, that, that goes perfectly with our route of flight. We're gonna hit treasure, hang a, you know, hang a left, hit Bluffy, hang a, uh, another right, and uh, They'll take a straight path for Lauderdale Executive. That's one of the, uh, one of the, even though it's pointing at Miami International, you can still, it's an arrival for the area. So that's one we want to use. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and use Bluffy as our, ne as our next waypoint in our route of flight, and then Bluffy to arrival as our uh, arrival. So go ahead and put that into your flight plan. Did I spell that right? Watch out for the spelling if you don't, yeah, I did not. If you don't spell it right, it won't go in. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's what our route of flight is looking like. Yeah, okay. So we're going to come out of Daytona, hit Ormond, come down, follow the coast, and uh, hit Bluffy, and come right into Fort Lauderdale. Great. But as you, as you may have recalled, that one goes to Miami, so we need to get into Fort Lauderdale. That would be an approach. Um, normally you would set this up in flight when you have the weather and data, stuff like that. So if you're actually doing a flight with real weather, you'd hold off on the approach until you're, you know, almost, uh, I'd say about an hour away from your destination or 30 minutes away from your destination uh, to have confirmed weather, to know what runways you're actually going to be approaching into and stuff like that. Um, but for my tutorial, as I said, I'm just keeping it on easy, uh, the weather is simple. So we're going to go ahead and do a straight in on, uh, what else do I have there? Let's see. If you also need a chart, there's a chart right here. 2-8 right. So we're going to try and catch an ILS into 2-8 right. So, oops, I did not mean to close that. So let's go back here. All right, so we're looking at our approaches, our IAPs, instrument approach charts. Ah, there's one. ILS or localizer 2-8 right. Difference between, let me just go over the difference between the ILS and the localizer. ILS has a glide slope. The localizer does not. Simple. Simple as that. Okay. So, again, it looks kind of confusing. It literally took me a whole semester of schooling to learn how to read these. Um, specifically with all the details and stuff like that. But, uh, so, what we're looking at here is basically our approach into runway 28 right. So we got our, um, let's see here, look for our initial, Jumar as our initial approach fix, okay? So we're going to hit Jumar on our way in, wherever that is, that would be right there. So we're going to hit Jumar, and then we're going to descend down to 2,000 feet. So we need to hit Jumar at 2,500, descend down to 2,000 feet to uh, Snape. And then we'll hit the glide slope and carry it on down to there. 
Now you could go into, you know, the holding for IFR and all that, but like I said, I just want to make it simple so you have a flight plan. Um, so the simple part is, your approach for this, for my tutorial, is going to be the ILS 28 right. Uh, don't worry about the minimums, don't worry about the uh, the final approach fix, the missed approach fix, don't worry about the minimum safe altitude. This is just basic. If you want, if you want to know more about those, read into it. Um, or request it and I can make a tutorial on that, but just for now just know that you're going to be putting ILS 28 right into your FMC. So that is part of our flight plan. Okay. So, to go over the final flight plan that we just made, we're going to start in Daytona. Oops, did I mean to click on that? Whoops, okay. So, we're starting over in Daytona. And we're using the uh, Lama 5 departure out of Daytona to Ormond Beach VOR. From Ormond Beach, we're going to go ahead and hit um, the, what fix is that? Bitho fix. Okay. And then from Bitho, we're going to go ahead and hit treasure. Treasure, we're going to run the J45 down to Bluffy. Bluffy, we're going to do the Bluffy uh, 2 to two arrival, I believe it is. Bluffy 2 arrival, yeah. Bluffy 2 arrival down to. Um, our initial approach fix, which will be Jumar. Mm -hmm. Now this little thing right there is called a procedure turn, and that's so you can come in, you kind of do a holding pattern real quick, and then go in. Don't worry about that. Um, so let's go ahead and put Jumar into our flight plan. Jumar, let's see where it is. Plug that in right there. Okay, there we go. That looks better. A little bit of a take turn, but you can do it. And that's all your flight plan. That's all you need. And in the next episode, I will show you how to plug that into the FMC, also with weight and payload, um, and all that stuff. Um, I guess while we're at it, one other place you can get your flight plans from. If you're doing one, this is just a general knowledge uh, with a normal aircraft, you can go to flightaware.com. And then you can look up routes of flights. So let's look up one. Let's see. Live flight flight tracking. Um, by it should be by route of flight. It's right here somewhere. Yes, here we go. So let's go with um, KPBI KPL. Search that up. And then you get all these, all these um, flights. Uh, if you, you know, try and find your aircraft 757, 200, and then it'll, and you can get their, uh, their flight plan. You can use their flight plan. Um, they also have a flight planning thing in here too. You can use FlightAware as well. It, it works, but I like doing it the other way, because um, then you're kind of looking at it and you can kind of see it. So that's the basic. Uh, flight plan for our tutorial and I hope this helped and tune in next time for uh, using this flight plan in our flight so see you guys next time